You know, some time ago on Hidden Brain, we spoke with the researcher Vera Tobin. Uh, she studies the techniques that storytellers use to take advantage of our cognitive systems. And she said something that is very close to what you just told me a second ago. I want to play you a short clip of what she said. What a story can do for you is construct this insight experience where you feel not that something has blindsided you or that you were just taken by surprise, but this experience that feels as if you have a real aha moment about how things fit together. And that is something that humans like a lot. So the two things that jump out at me when I, when I hear Vera say that, Tanya, is that storytellers are doing two things. One, they're actually constructing a story that has mystery and confusion and uncertainty built into it. And because we find those things aversive, it actually serves as a hook that keeps us listening, keeps us watching, keeps us reading. And then when the explanation is provided, it provides us with this burst of pleasure because we suddenly understand that the mystery is resolved, the puzzle is solved. Yes, I, I love that example. And I would also add that science can often have that character mm. as well. You know, So in the case of a good story, there's an author crafting the story to have just the right form. But I think part of what makes science very satisfying is that some of the time we get that experience as well of having all of these clues and then getting the satisfying theory that makes all of those clues uh, fit together in a way that makes sense. Very often these conclusions are actually wrong and we really need to slow down and ask ourselves, how do I know what I think I know? That's right. Yeah, absolutely. I think asking ourselves how we know what we think we know and thinking about alternative explanations are both very powerful tools for trying to overcome some of our tendencies to leap to conclusions and go with our familiar explanations. <laughs> 